Oh my god. <laughs> sing. You wanna sing? <laughs> Sing. What's up, guys? Check this out. Look at this. This dude just eats an entire quarter of Coke. Look at that. That is awesome. I hope this guy gets away with this. And I can't help but wonder when they see this footage, you know, if he did get let go after this, would they rebook him? Would they go after him again? I think if you do something like that, if you eat a quarter of Coke, you should be let go. I saw this watching one of those uh, Tosh Pointer ripoff, Rob Derrick, what the hell, Fantasy Factor? No, you know what I'm talking about. I was watching that. This is like one of the season one episodes. The TV was just sitting on MTV and it popped on the screen. I thought it was the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. So I had to share it with you guys. But here we go. We got our type final two. I got it on the switch because that portable factor just means everything to me. Uh, one of my buddies on Instagram did raise the question about slowdown on the Nintendo switch. And that's valid. And uh, at this point, I'm doing a voiceover right now, so I have played arts. I mean, I played the demo too, but I have played the game for a while now. Eh, three hours maybe. Not a while. I'm gonna stream it here in a little bit. And yeah, I do see a little, a little slowdown on the switch. It's nothing major, but I could see if it played on a PS4, or, you know, Xbox One. I could see where it would probably run a lot smoother. But then again, I can't help but wonder when they release, there's all this talk about the new Switch coming out, this new uh, Super Switch, Switch Pro, a Switch that has, you know, considerably more power. I would think, of, of course, it would be backwards compatible, but I would also think it would run all the previous games um, a lot smoother, I would think. Anyway, let's rip this uh I kind of like how they got this. I, I, this isn't a collector's edition, I guess. To me, it is because... It's got the game, there's a soundtrack in there, it's got an art book. I mean, the art books are cool, but for me, the game and the soundtrack is everything. Now, when I looked at this on the eShop on the Nintendo, I didn't look at it on the PS4 uh, store, but I did look at it on the Switch eShop, and I saw that there was two DLC packs. One you could, I don't know if they were, I guess you had to pay for them, maybe five or ten bucks, I don't know, I forget. But there was one that was already out, and there was one that's coming out, and it's like, damn. Oh, and there's also like a standard edition digital that's 40 and then this better edition that's 60. And it's like, damn, can't they just put everything in one and just release it? There's like DLC packs on this shooter. Like, come on, man. I also found out this was like a kickstarted thing. This is like a crowdfunded thing. So it's like, if this is like a crowdfunded thing, why is there like all these DLC packs? And why would they even release a physical before they got all the DLC on the disc or the cart? I don't that as just I'm not even like a huge game collector, but just like a, a video game guy, like shooters. I, I I just I think about that kind of thing. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Me and another uh, uh, Dat game collector, we were kind of politicking on that for a little bit over the phone the other day. But I, I I can't really complain about the price. I got this for fifty bucks at Best Buy. Um, I went to two different Best Buys and I went online. And they said, both of them said they had this in stock. So the second one, I, I was like, look, you say you have it in stock online. I don't see it. So they went in the back and got it for me. So you guys, if you go to your Best Buys and they don't have it on the shelf and you see it's online, they got one in stock because all the stores got one in stock. Tell them to go in the back. They might have it if they say there's one in stock online. Not too impressed with the inside of that, uh, <laughs> that box right there. Damn. But yeah, that's uh, that's the R-Type Final 2 on the Nintendo Switch. Okay, here we go. My first impressions on R-Type Final 2. Now, when I started up the Switch version, I'm assuming this applies to the PS4 and Xbox version, but if it doesn't, please let me know in the comments. Uh, when I started up the game, I had my choice of three ships. There's actually 12 levels, which I'm assuming applies to the other releases as well, but there's three ships. I started off with the third ship. It has like these two gray 
weird claw looking kind of thing swinging out from the front of it. Kind of hard to explain or describe, but chose that ship first. Wasn't feeling that ship. I played for about 15 minutes with it, really wasn't feeling it. Then I moved over to the second ship. Now, I will say this the second ship played a little bit better. I liked the, the weapons and I liked just the way I would like, I liked it a little bit better, but I wanted to try out that first ship. I wanted to see how that first ship played. And that's where I found that the first ship, it, it reminded me more of the original R-Type final and just the weapons that you get in R, most of the R-Type games. So I stuck with the first ship through pretty much the entirety of what I've played of the game, except for 15 minutes with the two remaining ships. Now, there are customizable options with these ships if you go into the menu system. I haven't even begun to touch that, but... Uh, a couple people, Studio Mud Prince, he uh, jumped in during a live stream, and he uh, he was talking a little bit about that. So that is something that I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna dive into a little bit deeper when I'm done playing Shadow Hearts. <laughs> right now, I'm in the middle of that RPG Shadow Hearts on the PS2. So when I'm done that, I'm gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive on R Type Final Two. And if it turns out to be a game that I you know, I end up digging a lot. I'll probably find a, a standard edition or whatever for the PS4 if I can find it for a deal. But yeah, I got through the first couple levels. You know, other staples of R-Type games you're gonna find in this R-Type game, you're gonna have uh, the the death point, the death checkpoints. You die, you go to a check checkpoint, checkpoint deaths. You're gonna have that. That's a staple in R-Type games. Now, I can see how young a younger generation of gamers would totally not be feeling that i get that because i'm not feeling it sometimes myself but it gives the game a lot more replay value and that's the thing and i think that's another reason why games like this have to get crowdfunded it's just those weird uh those weird gameplay things that you know they some people are feeling it but a lot of people the probably probably the vast majority of people aren't and that's why they get crowdfunded so but at least it was published by an NIS America, which isn't really surprising because we saw them do those Psycho games that weren't emulated the greatest, but we didn't have the options. Like, we're spoiled with all the M2 stuff, all the M2 ports, and it would have been great if M2 actually did it, but they didn't. But anyway, we're not talking about those Psycho games. We're talking about R-Type Final 2. I like the backgrounds. Um... I like the backgrounds, how they scroll and everything just kind of moves. And it, uh, like I've said before, that I feel like this game is an environmental puzzler. And the backgrounds and how they scroll and uh, the visuals that it gives you really adds to that. I really dig that. And it really adds to the charm of this game. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of, that, like I said, environmental puzzler. Those are the same vibes that I got from the original R Type Final when I played it on the PlayStation 2. So this is like this is literally the next step from that, you know, brought to a more modern. Um, I don't want to say modern because we all know if you've played this, you could see that this would run on a 360 or PS3 or, or Vita. Hell, it might even run on a 3DS. But I want to say a more modern system. Um, yeah, and if you guys see this game, pick it up. If you like shooters, pick it up. I think every Best Buy, from what I understand, got one copy. I don't know if they got one copy for each system, like Xbox and everything, but I could see this being one of those like rare collectible games on all the systems that it came out for, especially the Xbox One. Raiden 5 came out physically for the Xbox One, and that game I never see anywhere, and I know that game's worth something on the Xbox One. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If, you've got played, if you guys have played this, if you've actually gotten through the first few levels, let me know in the comments. I think I'm on level three or four at this point. I played it during a live stream and I was dying left and right. I actually had even had to bump it down to the kids level of uh, difficulty. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I think this is a pretty tough game and it's got a ton of replay value. And God, let me know also, guys, if you've downloaded that first DLC pack, because I saw there was one that's available now and there's one that maybe by the time you see this video, maybe the second one will be available as well. But it wasn't when I checked or when I last checked anyway. But yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. Till next time. Peace.